that in the smile. That was good, amen? Absolutely, all right. All right, church family, take your Bibles, if you would, to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 14. 1 Corinthians chapter number 14 is uh, where we're going to be here tonight. 1 Corinthians chapter number 14. <clears throat> 1 Corinthians chapter number 14, uh, and if you're there, out of honor and respect for reading of God's word, I'd ask you to please stand as we get into uh, the text here. Verse, we're going to begin reading verse number 26, and we're going to go down, uh, down to the end of the chapter. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 26 through verse number 40. The Bible says this, 1 Corinthians 14, 26. How is it then, brethren, when ye come together, every one of you hath a psalm, hath a doctrine, hath a tongue, hath revelation, hath an interpretation, that all things be done unto edifying? If any man speak in an unknown tongue, that it be by two, or at the most by three, and that, and that by course, and that it let one interpret. But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church, and let him speak to himself and to God. Let the prophet speak two or three, and let the other judge. If anything be revealed to another that sitteth by, let the first hold his peace. For ye may all prophesy one by one, that all may learn, and all may be comforted. And the spirits and the prophets are subject to the prophets. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all, the, as in all churches of the saints. Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under the obedience as as also saith the law. Are we okay? Are we okay? Okay, here we go. And if they, if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for a woman to speak in the church. Are we still okay? Yeah. Well, I know you're good. <laughs> Verse 36. What? Came the word of God out from you? Or came it un, unto you only? If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. But if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. Wherefore, brethren, covet prophecy, and forbid not to speak with tongues, that all things be done decently and in order. Church, I think this can be a help to Calvary Baptist Church tonight, and not just as a church body, but I think it could be a help to us as individuals that make up the church body. And so tonight, the title of the message is this, a church that's in order, a church that's in order. Listen, I think God wants Calvary Baptist Church to be a church that's in order. Absolutely. So we're going to see what God's word has to say here tonight. So let's have a word of prayer, and then you can be seated. Father, we come before you, Lord, here this evening. And Lord, we are so thankful for the truth of the Bible. And Lord, we know that it's been preserved for us, Lord, so that we would glean timeless truths that you would have us to know. And Lord, that we might follow principles and that we might follow, Lord, the teachings of the word. And, and Lord, that it would be good for us, Lord, to acknowledge these things and apply them to everyday life. Father, I need you. I need you, Lord, now as I preach. I need you so desperately. And Father, I pray that you would just allow this message, Father, to touch the hearts of your people in a right way. And Lord, help me to preach the word as you want it preached. Help me, Lord, to just convey the truth that as you have written and that you've preserved for us here tonight. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you. You may be seated. <clears throat> You know, as Paul was writing to the Corinthians, um, this is sermon number 36. We've been 36 weeks in the book of 1 Corinthians. And, and I, we've come to notice over the past several weeks that the, the people of Corinth, they were being very immature Christians. They were being immature in the sense of how they've been using their spiritual gifts. They were flaunting it in front of other believers. And they were 
thinking that they were more spiritual because they've had the gift of speaking in tongues and things of that sort. And, and we've learned this from the past couple of weeks that basically Paul was saying this about the Corinthian church. Hey, you need to grow up. You need to grow up. You need to start being more spiritually mature. You need to start doing that and, and basically on how they were treating one another. B- because, listen, church, everyone within the church wanted attention. Everyone within the church wanted to be heard. Everybody, listen, selfishness was a big problem within the church. Hey, hey, listen, if everybody is being selfish within the church, now let me have your attention up here. If everyone's being selfish, no one benefits in the church. If everyone's being selfish within the church, listen, nobody gets edified. Nobody gets exhorted. Nobody gets encouraged. Hey, listen, my, my hope is and my prayer is, is that when we come to Calvary Baptist Church, that we get encouraged by fellowship. We get encouraged by rubbing shoulders with God's people. We get encouraged by godly music. And we get encouraged through the word of God. It, look, my hope is that we be encouraged. Now, listen, I understand sometimes the word of God can be convicting. And that doesn't feel very encouraging at all at times. But if we respond accordingly to that conviction, we can leave here encouraged knowing we got things right with God. So my prayer is that, and my hope is that, when we come to church, listen, that we be encouraged. Certainly so. But a church that is focused on self can lead to being a confusing church. Okay, Paul expresses that there has been confusion within the church when they assemble. Now, it appears that when, when the church of Corinth, when they got together, it appears that there was a lot of liberty that was taken within the church members. And and because look at verse number 26 here. It says, how is it then, brethren, when ye come together? It's like when when you come together for church, how is it, brethren, when ye come together, every one of you hath a psalm, hath a doctrine, hath a tongue, hath a revelation, hath an interpretation. Let all things be done unto edifying. Now, I believe the idea what Paul's trying to get at here is that every time the church, they would meet together, everybody wanted to be heard. Every, listen, everybody had a psalm. Everybody had a prophet, had a prophecy. Everybody had a doctrine. Everybody wanted to speak in tongue. Everybody had a revelation. And so Paul, he used a similar analogy earlier in the chapter, and he, we talked about it last week when it was applied to speaking in tongues. Now, do you remember the analogy? And, and I, I used some people from the congregation. I think I used Brother Young saying that if Brother Young spoke in Portuguese and Brother or, or Miss Molly spoke in Spanish and, and maybe Brother Bo spoke in, I don't know, some other language, Chinese or whatever. And we all had the ability to speak in tongues, but we were all selfish and we all wanted everybody to be heard. And all of us stand up and we just started chanting and speaking in foreign languages and a visitor coming through the doors. What would that visitor think? Well, this is what Paul said, what the visitor would think. They're mad. Those folk are crazy. Those people are crazy there at that church. And so basically, I think it's the same principle here. Listen, everybody's wanting the spotlight. Everybody within the church wanted to have a platform, so to speak. And so Paul is saying, listen, when everyone is selfish and everyone's wanting the spotlight, no one is being edified and it only brings confusion in the church. Okay. So to say the least, the church of Corinth was a church that was out of order. And then Paul gives them, he gives them some guidelines to help them to kind of reestablish some order within the church. And he he gives them some instructions about the gift of speaking in tongues within the church here. Okay, now look at verse number 27. He's going to kind of help them with the idea of how to use tongues within the church. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two or at the most by three, and that by course let one interpret. So Paul says, listen, if you have people who can speak in tongues, speaking about a known language within the church, he he says, listen, let it be done by two and no more than three. And, and, And listen, the idea of by course, he says, and that by course, the idea is this, one at a time. One at a time. Not one speaking in Portuguese, one, one, another speaking in Russian, not another speaking in Chinese, all at the same time. No, 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 Paul says, no, three at the most, but one at a time. But then he also said this, let one interpret. There needs to be an interpreter there. Because remember, if there's no interpreter, and someone's just standing up and speaking in an unknown language to the rest of us, no one is being edified by that. No one is being encouraged by that. 
The only person who's being edified and uplifted is the one who's speaking. That was it. And so Paul says, listen, if you're going to have someone speak in tongues, then it needs to be by two, no more than three, one at a time, and make sure there's an interpreter present. Yeah. Yep. Then Paul gives them some instructions about how they were to, uh, oh, look at verse number 28. Look at verse 28. But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church and let him speak to himself and to God. So that means that if someone had the gift of speaking in tongues, but no one was there to interpret it, then Paul said this, hey, you know what? Just keep silent. Don't speak. Just keep silent. In essence, Paul's basically saying this. If you're not able to contribute to the service, then don't be willing to take away from the service. If you're not willing to contribute, then don't be willing to take away. Then Paul gives some instruction about how they were to use the gift of prophesying. So he gave them some guidelines about speaking in tongues. Now he's given them some guidelines about the gift of prophecy. Verse 29 there. Let's follow along. Let the prophets speak two or three and let the other judge. Okay, church, now let, look here. This, we need to understand about the day and time or, or where they were at and how God was using them at this time. Understand that God's word was not completed just yet. They didn't have the full canon of scripture like the way you and I do. And so it was during this time that God would still be willing to reveal revelation, that God would reveal certain things a little bit at a time. And so Paul says, listen, if you have the gift of prophecy, then, then, then prophets speak two or three and let the other judge. Wait, how about that? I mean, back then they had two or three preachers. Yeah. Brother Young, you're up next. <laughs> they had two or three preachers back then but paul says listen if 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 uh the if god had given you some special revelation god had given you something new then then the prophets that speak two or three then it says and let the other judge uh, what's the other judge mean it doesn't mean that they would sit there and critique the preacher no no that the the word others is a plural word so there there was many judges and here's the thing they were there to make sure is this truth or not is this really truth or not uh, uh, basically if someone were going to stand up and say that they had the, they received something from god and they were to stand up and they were proclaim this was from God, then there was supposed to be people within the congregation that were listening intently, and they needed to make sure is what they were saying matched up with the Old Testament. Did it match up with the Word of God? Not only did it match up with the Word of God, does it match up with what Jesus says? Yeah. Hey, listen, Paul knew, hey, there's false prophets in the world. There's false teachers in the world. And, and listen, just because someone might say, I have the gift of prophecy, and they stand up and they proclaim something— Paul wanted to make sure, hey, listen, you better make sure that you got some security uh, people in place and to make sure is what they're proclaiming actually truth. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Paul was very cautious back then about who would stand up and speak. Now look at verse number 30. If anything be revealed unto another that sitteth by, let the first hold his peace. Listen, if God had revealed to revealed something to someone who had the gift of prophecy but somebody else at the time was on was, was speaking or somebody else was preaching and proclaiming something paul said hey let the first uh, speaker finish what they had to say lest there be confusion going on within the church because look at verse number 31 it says for ye may all prophesy one by one that all may learn and all may be comforted listen paul wanted there to be order within the church Paul wanted there to be ordered, and, and so therefore he didn't want somebody who was speaking, who had the gift of prophecy, then all of a sudden somebody else just kind of stand up and say, I've received something new. I've received, uh, right smack dab in the middle of the service, and here's Paul saying, listen, if God gave you something new right in the middle of service, then, then here's the thing, you just need to hold, uh, wait till the other preacher holds his peace, and then therefore you're able to stand up one by one. God, or, or Paul wanted the church to be orderly. Why? God's a God of order. He's a God of order. Because <clears throat> look at verse number 32 here. It says, and the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. Paul's saying in this verse, no one can claim that the spirit moved them to interrupt. 
Nobody can claim that. Nobody can claim if, if, the preacher's stand, if the preacher's preaching and there they are and they're giving truth from God, no one can stand up and claim and just say, I'm sorry, preacher, I just got to interrupt you. God gave me something else. God, listen, I just lost control and this is the spirit leading me to do this and God has given me something that I just need to share with everybody within the congregation. No, no, because the Bible says this, and the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. Well, what's that mean? It means this. It means the prophets won't be carried away against his own will to speak up in the middle of service. You following me? The Spirit's not going to just make them go against their own will. Hey, listen, there, there's a lot of people today that are saying that, hey, I mean, that are pushing that you can just lose control. People, their eyeballs roll into the back of their heads and they're twitching and they're convulsing. And people say the Spirit has a hold on them. No, 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 no. It might be a Spirit, but that's not the Spirit of God. It's not the Spirit of God, church. Hey, you got to be careful of that because the fruit of the Spirit is, is temperance. Temperance means self-control. And if people are losing control, that's not a fruit of the Spirit of God. Yeah. Well, why is that? Well, 33 says, for God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. Paul's saying, listen, that it's not, it's not of God if there's going to be confusion within the church. Listen, if it's not of God, if someone's speaking in an unknown language and all of a sudden there's another person speaking in an unknown language at the same time, listen, there's going to be confusion there. Or if there's one preacher preaching and all of a sudden somebody else stands up and starts preaching, listen, how would you like if me and Brother Young, at the same time, we stood up, I stood over here, he stood over here, I told you to turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians, he told you to turn your Bibles to the book of Genesis, and then all of a sudden we just start going off at the same time, how many of you are going to get something out of it? You might get something out of him because he goes way longer than I do, but <laughs> I'll be done. And then you can focus your attention on, no, 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 no. Hey, I love my preacher. I love him. I love him. I love him. I love him. But, but, but that's the idea here. And this is what Paul's saying. Listen, God is not the author of confusion. There's not going to be confusion within the church. He's, he's not going to lead confusion with the gift of tongues. He's not going to lead to confusion with the gift of prophecy. He's not going to lead to confusion in any of those things. But the Bible says, but of peace as in all the churches of the saints. That word peace means this. There's going to be harmony in the church. It's going to be harmony. Listen, everything's just going to flow together. Everything's going to click together within the church. There's not going to be any confusion. God is not the author of that. So he's given them some guidance about speaking in tongues. He's given them some guidance about the gift of prophecy, how they're supposed to do it orderly within the church. And then here we go. Thirdly, we see Paul giving some instruction about women within the church. Thirty-four. Let your women keep silence in the churches. For it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. Okay, let me clarify some things here, all right? Don't throw your vegetables at me just yet, okay? Paul's not chauvinistic. Come on. Paul's not chauvinistic here. Listen, th this is the same man who spoke kindly of Priscilla in Acts chapter 18. This is the same man who, who said this, I commend unto you Phoebe, our sister. This is the same man here. And so here's Paul. He's not saying he, he, that he hates women. He's not saying anything like that. He's not being chauvinistic in the church. No, he's not doing that. He's not a man who looks down upon women. He's not saying that a woman could not, when they walk into the church doors, that they're supposed to be silent. Shh. No, 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 no. That's not what he's saying. Nor is he saying that women can't sing praises to God or, or, or use their talents for the Lord within the church. He's not saying that. This is what Paul said. He says, they are commanded to be under obedience as also saith the law. That, that's what he's saying. Now, what's he getting at? Well, I believe what he's getting at is that he's reminding them, he's reminding ladies that God has given ladies a very specific role that was mentioned in the law. Now, what law is he referring to? Now, most likely he's referring to Genesis chapter number 3, and that the role was that their desire was to be unto their husband, and the husband shall rule over them. So here, here's what I believe what uh, Paul's trying to say here, that in regards to ladies within the church, 
God is a God of order. He's a God of order. And he wants his church to be in order. And what he's saying to the ladies is that, ladies, you have been given a role that was in the law. And that role was so that you would be under your authority, being your husband, being the men. Come on, church. This is biblical here. This is of the word of God here. And so the idea is that what Paul is getting at is that if there is going to be order in the family, then that order should be kept also within the church. Am I making sense? Okay. So here's the thing. Can a woman sing in church? Yes. I hope you do. I hope and pray that you do. Can a woman praise God in church? Yes. Please do. Please do so. But can a woman have authority over men within the church? No. No. Well, why is that? Because that's not God's order. That's not his order. And listen, he was trying to bring them back to Genesis chapter number three. He's trying to remind them of the law. Listen, there is an order to things. And God is a God of order. And, and, and listen, if, if I believe church, listen, this also deals with the issue of, of having women pastors and how women can't be pastors. He, he, he deals with that. Now, listen, can a, can a lady teach within the church? Absolutely. Can a, can a lady do specials in the church? Absolutely. Can a lady sing a song, do a solo within the church? Absolutely. They can do all those things. But here's what Paul's getting at. He's saying, listen, that there needs to be order within the church. And so, therefore, if God had established man to be over the woman, then that also needs to be taken place within the local church. Yeah. Now, look at verse number 35. He says, and if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it's a shame for the women to speak in the church. Okay, so Paul said that if a woman had a question about something, then she needed to go home to ask her husband. All right. Now, ladies, uh, I'm going to give you a little break here. Husbands, men, I want your full attention here. Because Paul said this, that if there's a lady who's having a question that they're supposed to go home, and if you're a husband tonight, they're supposed to ask you. They're supposed to ask you. You know what that implies? It implies this. We need to be spiritual leaders of our homes. Yes. We need to be spiritual leaders of our homes. And that also implies this, that we need to know more of the word of God than our wives do. And, that, and, and that's not to say that the ladies need to stop reading their Bibles. And that's not to say that the ladies need to stop knowing the word of God. It's just simply understanding our roles as men, men, that we would be the spiritual leaders and that we would know God's word more. That we would know God's word more intently. And, and, and listen, I'm afraid that husbands aren't being the spiritual leaders like they should, unfortunately. Oh, oh, come on. Listen, I'm afraid that husbands are not being the spiritual leaders and they're becoming more passive and weak. Oh, <laughs> now I got the husbands mad at me. Here we go. Listen, I'm afraid that the phrase, you ever heard the phrase, happy wife, happy, uh, happy wife, happy life? You know, I'm afraid, man, I'm afraid sometimes Christian men have taken that to the extreme. They've taken that to extreme, and because they've taken that to extreme, uh, uh, husbands, whether our wives know it or not, if, we, if our wives are going to be happy, then here's what the best thing that we can do, men. And it's to embrace our God-given role and be the leaders. Yeah. Be the leaders of our homes. Be the spiritual leaders over our wives and over our children. Be the leaders of our homes. Because here's the thing. When husband, when you're doing and being what God wants you to be, your wife will be happy. Right. Listen, I've never known... Of a wife who was abused or mistreated when her husband was following God. Never known of a, hus of, of a, of a wife who was abused, mistreated, uh, uh, felt uncomfortable, felt, felt betrayed, felt belittled. When the husband, when the man, when the leader was following God like he should. Yeah. So Paul, he, he says, if she has a spiritual question, then she needs to ask her husband. And now notice he, he says, at home. At home. Because Paul says it's a shame 
to speak in the church. Well, understand, he's not saying that you're not allowed in here, you're not allowed to come into the church and speak two words because that's a shame. No, 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 no. That's not what he's talking about here. What he's talking about is that when they come and speak in the church, that has the idea of interrupting the service, has the idea of being standing up and, and then questioning, questioning the preacher uh, uh, about what he's preaching about. Well, what Paul's saying, ladies, if you have a question, then you need to go home and speak to your husband about it. Well, why is it a shame? Well, one, it interrupts the service. It takes away from edifying. And secondly, it does this. Ladies, you're going around your authority. You're going around your head. You're going around your husband. And so here's what Paul says. He says, that's a shame, and it's taken away from the service. Now, much like today, this really wouldn't go over well. This really wouldn't. What I'm preaching to you right now, this certainly is not popular in the century in which we live in, for sure. But, and listen, people would say, what? Women aren't supposed to preach? Women aren't supposed to be pastors? Women aren't supposed to have authority over men? Women aren't supposed to do that? And no doubt Paul knew that he was going to face some backlash, just like I very well might face some backlash tonight. This is being recorded and online, so I very well might get some hate mail. That's okay. Right? <laughs> You're like, I'm not getting it. Sure. <laughs> but, but listen, Paul, he, he, <laughs> don't you just love sarcasm? Paul, he uses some, like some spiritual sarcasm here to meet any arguments that might come his way. Notice some sarcasm in Paul's voice in verse number 36. He says, what? See, they're saying what too? What? Came the word of God out from you? Or came it unto you only? Paul's asking, did you write the word of God? So he's asking him. Or when the word of God was delivered, was it only delivered to you? There's a sarcasm there. You know, Paul, he's letting them know that these guidelines that he's given them, this is not something that Paul came up with. This is not something that these are Paul's ideas. These are not just Paul's suggestions here. Because look at verse number 37. He says, if any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. Here's what Paul's saying to the church of Corinth. Listen, believers, if, if there are any who can honestly and truly, sincerely say that you have been given the gift of prophecy, or if there's anybody within the church that can honestly and truly, sincerely say that God has given them the gift of being spiritual, then Paul says this, then you too can testify that I'm just not coming up with these rules. I'm just not coming up with these guidelines. This isn't my two cents. What I'm giving you is the commandments of the Lord. This is coming from God. The, 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 uh, the order of speaking in tongues, that's not coming from me. That's coming from the commandments of God. The order of uh, being able to prophesy one at a time, that's not coming from me. That's coming from God. The, the, the role of ladies within the church, that's not coming from me being a chauvinistic pig. No, no, no. That's coming from the one who set things in order. These are the commandments from God. But here's the thing. There's always going to be people who fight against it. There will always be people who will always fight against. Because look at verse number 38. He says, but if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. Basically what that means is that there's going to be people who fight against the idea that these are God's commands. Oh, no, 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 no. You can be a lady preacher. No, 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 you, you can be one. Listen, if you feel the urge to stand up and to speak in tongues and interrupt the service, feel free to do so. Listen, there, there will always be people who say that. And so Paul says this, listen, there's going to be people who are ignorant, so here's the thing. Just let them be ignorant. In other words, there's no point in trying to talk them out of it. There, there's no point in arguing with them. In a way, it's kind of like Paul saying this, let them be wrong. Let them be wrong. And then Paul gives them some words of admonition in verses 39 and 40. He says, Wherefore, brethren, covet prophecy and forbid not to speak with tongues, that all things be done decently and in order. Listen, church, the issue wasn't the gifts, remember? Listen, gifts were good. Why were the gifts good? Because they came from God. That's why they were good. The issue was is that they were misusing the gifts, and it was causing things to get out of order within the church. And so here's Paul. He has given them these commandments from God. 
they were not from him because Paul knew this. If the church just kept these commandments that didn't originate with him, but they, but they originated with God, Paul knew this. If they kept them, then they would bring order within the church. But here's what they ought to do. Follow God's commands. Just follow God's commands. And then there will be order within the church. You know, I believe what we just seen from the word here tonight can be a real help to Calvary Baptist Church. I really believe that, church. And listen, I just don't believe that it can be a help to us as a church body. But I also believe that there's some principles here that can be a help to us as individuals as well. And, and here's what we can take away from this passage here. When God's commands are, are kept, listen, then we can expect things to be done decently and in order. When God's commandments are kept, listen, we can operate according to God's order here in Calvary Baptist Church. We can. You know, when we adhere to God's commands regarding our roles, listen, there can be order within the church here. Listen, we need to understand this. I understand, like, uh, uh, earlier, several weeks ago, we talked about how we were all under rowers. Do you remember that? We are all under rowers. There's not one better than the other. But understand, though we are all under rowers, we all do have different roles within the church. I have a different role than you do. I have a role as the pastor of Calvary Baptist Church. And listen, the role of the pastor is this. My role is this. Feed the flock. Feed the flock. Preach the word. Preach it like God said it. Don't alter it. Don't add to it. Don't take away from it. Feed the flock. That's my role. My role is to protect the flock. My role is to nurture the flock. That's my role here as the pastor of Calvary Baptist Church. Listen, there's a role for deacons that are given to us in Scripture. And the, one of the roles for the deacons is this, to take care of the fatherless and the widows. Take care of the fatherless and the widows so that the, so that the preacher, so that the pastor can, can give attention to the word. It's in the book. It's there. And listen, there's the role of men within the church. The role of men is, listen, be the spiritual leaders of your homes. Be the spiritual leader. Be, lead your wife, men. Lead your wife. Don't let your wife be the spiritual leader in the home. Don't do that. Wives, let them lead. Okay. There's a role for ladies. There's a role for ladies within the church. We see from scriptures that the older ladies are to teach the younger ladies. Train the younger ladies. Now, here's the thing. We all have roles. I have a role and you have a role. But here's the thing. When we just follow God's commands about our role, <laughs> there's going to be order in Calvary Baptist Church. Amen. There's going to be order. And, and, and listen, I, I, I'm not going to follow roles that I think that, that come up with my two cents. No, 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 no. What we're supposed to do is we're supposed, we're supposed to follow the book. That's what we're supposed to do. We all have roles. Listen, if, if, we, if you follow your role, and I follow my role, and we're just following the commands that God has given to us through the Word of God, leading by the Holy Spirit of God, then listen, there won't be confusion. There won't be disunity. But you know what there'll be? Peace. Remember what peace is? Harmony. Here's the thing. Calvary Baptist Church can flow like this. It can flow like this. There will be peace and there will be harmony. And listen, Calvary Baptist Church won't have to be a church that's out of order. Listen, there's a lot of things that are out of order today. There's a lot of things that are out of order. Listen, nowadays it just seems like uh, there are many things that are out of order, such as marriages are getting out of order. Homes are getting out of order. Churches are getting out of order. Government is getting out of order. There's a whole lot of things that are out of order. But the principle is this. Listen, if we want order in our lives, if you want order in your marriage, if you want order with your family, if you want order with your kids, if you want uh, order being a member of Calvary Baptist Church, then this is what we just simply must do. Follow his commands. Follow the word. Apply the word as a church member. Apply the word in your marriage. Apply the word with your children. Apply the word in every area of your life. Because when you follow God's order, then there's peace. Then there's harmony. Then there's order. There's order there. You know, there's... Um, can't help but just look at maybe some big, super, mega, big churches. I mean, there, there are some churches that are so massive that they're so big that their own youth department has a separate building. 
I, I'm not even joking. And, 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 and you know, I, I, I'll, just, I'll just tell you what. I mean, that takes some order. That takes some organization. That takes some administrative type things. That takes some people who are willing to organize and execute a plan and to lay out the plan and, and make sure that everything goes right and accordingly and, and everything needs to be sharp. I mean, come on, you know what I'm talking about? It, it really takes all those things. And, and listen, it does. And they can have a church that is so massive and so big. And it's like they have 72 different other pastors. You have the senior pastor. You have the executive pastor. You have the youth pastor. You have the, uh, the, the, you have the lady pastor. You have all these different types of pastors. And they might say, hey, look, we got things in order here. We have all these different ministries that are in order here. But I want to submit this to you, ladies and gentlemen. Though they might be organized, and though they may look like they got all their ducks in a row, but if they're not following the commands of the book, they're out of order. They're out of order. Listen, I, I got nothing against big churches. Listen, if God blesses uh, a ministry to grow, and they're prosperous, and they're big, and they're large, and God allows them to reach people for the gospel's sake, praise God for that. Seriously, praise God for that. But here's the thing. This is the point I'm trying to make here. If we want order, let, let's not get in our minds what order looks like by having these big, massive, super mega churches with 72 different pastors and a youth department that's bigger than the town of Sterling and, and, and just all these different buses. Listen, that might look organized, but if we're going to be a church of order, then Calvary Baptist Church, we need to be a church that follows his commands. Amen. If we follow his commands as a church body, there'll be order in Calvary Baptist Church. If you follow his commands in your life, there will be order in your life. Because God is a God of order. So church family, I just want to encourage you this way. I, I, and I hope that this is a help to us tonight. That when it comes to having order within the church, and within our lives... It's not going to come by our ingenuity. It's not going to come by having a type A personality. It's not going to come by, uh, by building buildings and, 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 and reaching people with a watered down message. It's not going to come by that. It's going to come by following his commands. And that's how Calvary Baptist Church can be a church of order. Yeah, let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, tonight for the word. And Father, I do ask you, Lord, that you would help us tonight, Lord, that we would continue 